Hey, what's going on, everybody? Paul from Hashtag. Uh, so some crazy news. I, I mean, I guess I wouldn't call it totally crazy. Uh, Mitch Morris is uh, announced, or at least Ian Rappaport has announced via Twitter about an hour ago, that uh, Mitch Morris has restructured his contract uh, to stay with the Buffalo Bills. So uh, this was kind of, uh, tis the season of contract renegotiations and soon-to-be free agents. We're starting to see word that players like Seattle's talking about releasing Carlos Dunlop, which makes a ton of sense. They don't have room to keep him. Uh, and if you look up and down the Bills' uh, salary cap situation, you kind of get to a point where you look at Mitch Morris and you say, well, there's a lot of money in Mitch Morris. Um, are we really getting a true return on investment there? You signed, uh, you know, you signed Morris along with, you know, thinking that you're going to have a battery between Morris and Allen. You wanted an experienced center to go with a with a young quarterback. And, uh, you know, at some point you have to look at diminishing returns and whether you're getting the most out of, you know, the $10 million that you're going to pay Mitch Morris this season. Uh, well, Buffalo clearly had a conversation with him and said, listen, we either got to restructure a deal or we're going to have to walk away. Now, Buffalo could have saved if they were to release Mitch, Mitch Morris. They would have saved um, close to $5 million. But instead of doing that, again, this is all according to Ian Rappaport, uh, what they've done and oh, and hey, Steve, hey, Scott. Um, so what they've done is they've decided to restructure uh, his contract to lower his base salary. So simple restructure. It is just simply a pay cut. They're not moving the money anywhere else. It's not going anywhere. It is simply a true uh, just pay cut. Um, now, we don't know if the Bills have given future guarantees. So let me give you a little precedent here. The Bills did this with Starla Tulele, obviously not last year, but um, you know, right before, uh, right, right after the 2019 season. So what they did with Star was um, they took and lowered his his total contract value, right? They ended up lowering it the final three years of his deal. So right now we're only hearing of this being a pay cut right now for this year. Um, so we, we have, we're not even talking about 2022 at this point. We, we only really have word on 2021. So again, some of this could change. Um, but what they did with star was they lowered the final three years of his deal by $5.4 million across those three years. But they gave him an additional $5.65 million in guarantees, right? So that's why Star is on the team this year in 2021, regardless of what you want to do with him, because they guaranteed his salary. Um, so I, I don't know if they're doing that for Morris. Um, Rappaport obviously didn't go into details, stating that they were guaranteeing uh, the part of the salary that was remaining for Morris's contract. Um, we could hear word that that's what they're doing, but at this point, it just looks... Um, just looks like a straight pay cut for Mitch Morris. Now, again, you look at what this means and, um, you know, uh, when you start looking at the future, uh, for Mitch Morris, I am big riding the train, uh, for Landon Dickinson, uh, out of Alabama. I really like him. I mean, he, he tore his ACL in December, so he's not going to help you this year. But if the Bills trade back out of the first round uh, and end up picking another uh, uh, an additional second round pick, it's an option that they could be looking to draft a center. But again, you drafting a center at 30 isn't unheard of either. So the Bills really could be looking at, you know, hey, we probably need to rethink how we're approaching this position. Now, Morris is young. He is only 28. Uh, he's entering his age 28 season and it'll be 29 next year. But the injury history is kind of the, the bugaboo there. Uh, you're a little concerned about the injury history. And uh, when you start looking at a guy who's younger with injury history, it's easier to get on the train of looking for a replacement now than it is uh, you know, later uh, and, and kind of waiting for that mistake. Now, what I'm most curious about is they haven't signed Feliciano yet. Uh, and were they waiting to see if Mitch Morris would agree to a pay cut before resigning Feliciano? Was Feliciano going to be their replacement for Morris if they did have to cut him? I think it's an interesting conversation to have. Does the $2 million now go to Feliciano or were they only going to resign Feliciano if Morris wasn't taking a pay cut? It's an interesting conversation and I'm not really sure exactly how it'll play out. Hopefully we'll find out in the next couple days, uh, hopefully soon, because we're all impatient. I want to know whether Mongo is going to be on this team. Mongo wants to be on the team. So, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that Mongo's here if he wants to be. But it, it's a fascinating conversation once you start unraveling what does Mitch Morris have on John Feliciano. Now, are you going to keep 
you know, Morris for this year and then look at cutting, cutting him next year. Well, that's next year's problem. You're not worried about that right now. But if you re-sign Feliciano, Feliciano is going to be looking at a three to four year contract at kind of like the bare minimum. Um, so are you getting one year of Morris instead of three to four years out of Feliciano? And is that really worth it? Or is this a move to try and retain both? Uh, the argument could be made either way. I, I do think that this, it's easier to make the argument that um, he, uh, <laughs> triple nine silver, bro, you need some sun. Dude, I live in Buffalo and it is March. I ain't no sun. Are you talking to the sun? Come on, get out of here. Get out of here with that sun talk. Um, so it, it's an interesting conversation. Um, hey, what's going on, Donnie Brook? Uh, yeah, I see Tom Love, Krabby Cal. Uh, yep, as I mentioned before, Steve Scott uh, on the chat. Nathan, what's up? Um, so big, I think this is big news. Um, continuity across that offensive line is going to be critical. Um, if you were looking at letting Morris go, then you're looking at, well, we kind of have a goal at left guard. We we now have a, a self-made hole at center. We definitely still have a hole at right guard, and we still have a hole at ta right tackle. Um, so th this is a this is a big deal, right? Um, blah, 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 says market value. I think this does realign Morris a little bit more to market value. Again, it's just a, it's just a base salary reduction for 2021. And we don't know if they guaranteed future salary to get him there, but we'll see what happens. Um, yay. Jeff Varner's in B lightning, Dallas Howard, Buffalo, New Yorker. Um, if I were Josh Allen, I'd be thrilled with this news, right? A am I alone there? I I'd be, I'd be pretty pretty thrilled with this. Uh, Chris Janke asks, Hey Paul, why is it taking so long for the league to announce the official salary cap number? Teams need time to plan for free agency. You're right. Um, it's actually, it's, I mean, it's easier to project revenue when you're making money than to try and figure out how much money you want to allow teams to spend when you're not making money. Uh, it was kind of, I think they're kind of basing what the league is comfortable with off of any new television deals, um, which I don't think the ink has dried yet on any of those. So um, probably the way that it's going to be, uh, we're not really going to see a salary cap number for a while. The league is giving indication of where the floor is going to be. And if it comes in higher then that's just going to be a bonus, right? So the league has said it's going to be a floor of 180. Um, so that's at least something it's better than the 175 they were talking about. Um, it's not uncommon for the league to wait to announce salary cap numbers, but um, it's unusual for them to wait this long. I guess the best way for me to for me to phrase that. Uh, Krabby Cal's the Southwest Florida sun here today as usual. Yeah, my dad is in Florida. Uh, he runs a golf course down in Florida, and uh, he's most certainly tan. There is there is a very big difference between the complexions of the two things going on here. Um, so yeah, this is. I think there's a big move for the offense. You really need to struggle to keep continuity, uh, allowing Morris to remain in the building. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't a money thing, right? They were able to come to uh, come to an agreement. Again, Morris has missed time. So the Bills did kind of have some leverage there to say, listen, you're, you're missing time. You got this big contract. We need to readjust that base salary. And it's sort of the smart thing that I've noticed about being contracts is they're not often loaded with a lot of uh, signing bonus money. They're not trying to hide current dollar. And that's what a lot of GMs will do is they want to make you know, the year that they sign this player, their lowest cap number. So they give them a really big signing bonus. And then that impacts later years. It's really hard to renegotiate contracts with big signing bonuses. Well, Morris's contract really didn't contain any big signing bonuses, which was kind of nice. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's $11 million. But, you know, over the course of a few years, um, it's a lot easier to swallow that kind of a contract number than it is, you know, a player who signs a $30 million deal with half of it being signing bonus. And, you know, 10 million of that being guaranteed. The bills really haven't done that. Um, they've given the guaranteed money early in the years. And just like they did with Star Latulale, they're able to renegotiate that base salary and lower it, which I think speaks to the culture of what people want, right? Uh, us fans want a competitive team. And to have to come back to a point where just a few years ago, we completely remade the offensive line. And you look at what this team might have to do, and we're kind of in the same position, except we've got a left tackle now. Uh, so to keep Morris in the building, it's huge. It's a massive uh, it's a massive boost to the continuity of this line. It's a move that really kind of needed to happen, but it certainly does not preclude them from going and looking at you know another center in the draft. Um, you know, even signing somebody, uh, to the practice squad who they feel might be able to take over, uh, kind of long-term, uh, you do have to wonder if this is going to impact Feliciano, 
Um, hey, Rick. Uh, hey, Evan, what's going on? Um, so more to come here, right? Um, pay attention to whether it is truly just a base salary reduction. It looks like that's what it is right now, uh, which gives the bills a little bit more wiggle room. It doesn't look like they've renegotiated, renegotiated 2022 just yet. But Scott Blakely says it great. This is a great precedent to set. Um, this is. I mean, Starr did it. Morris did it. Now, mind you, those are players who kind of had a connection to the organization already, right? Um, but uh, this is a precedent that most teams struggle to get guys to take pay cuts. It's just a fact, right? Hey, Stevin, um, yeah, they you struggle to get guys to take pay cuts uh, across the NFL. And the fact that in you know back-to-back -back years, you were able to get guys to do it, that says an awful lot of the moxie of this front office and the relationships that they build from a front office perspective and a coaching perspective. And this is a this is a really big deal. Um, now, again, it doesn't mean that Buffalo is not going to look for a center of the future. I think, you know, Morris, granted, is only 28, but I mean, the clock is ticking due to the injury history. I think we all know that. Um, so could Buffalo go and draft a center in the upcoming draft? And this is just, you know, a way to kind of free up some cash to make them a little bit more competitive. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Uh, it could be right. You could be looking at that. But this is a big deal to the organization because it, it does talk about process and culture. It is. This is exactly what you want uh, from your organization. All right, guys. Paul from hashtag. Uh, I have to get back to work. Um, so yeah, it's Steve. Uh, Steve Rose. Don't forget to always uh, mute uh, the Zoom meeting that you're in when you're going to jump on uh, breaking Buffalo Bills hashtag news. Um, all right, guys. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. If you need anything, hit us up in the comments tab, and um, we'll see you later. Have a good one.